Even these bigger engines have become more compact physically and also much more fuel efficient. And so an eight-cylinder engine today is probably 25 to 30 percent um, more efficient than maybe 10 years ago. But I think what that's done is actually given more freedom to designers, mm -hmm. even with the larger engines, because they have, so they have less, less space to encapsulate, if you will, in the shell of the car. Um, but, you know, the big trucks are still out there. People still want the big trucks. Mm -hmm. um, People you know, still need the big trucks. They still need we the shouldn't give the Im impression that people right. just choose no. to drive these gas guzzlers. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of contractors and farmers and, and people. They're working uh, vehicles. You know, yeah, they're, they are they're working vehicles. And, and uh, the we're a, of America, right? We're a large country, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's a lot of open spaces, and people have gear mm -hmm. to haul and snowmobiles and uh, uh, boats, and not just yeah. for recreation, but for yeah. for work. You know, we right. had um, one of the main stories uh, we did at the Wall Street Journal, the show, was about um, this trend uh, toward lightweighting, where the right. automakers are now um, looking to alternatives to steel to take out weight. And it's a really interesting dynamic. What they, um, they're they using more uh, aluminum, the new Corvette, the underbody is all made of aluminum. Uh, there's more and more magnesium parts being used, just one or two here and there. Mm -hmm. um, the Corvette uh, has a lot of graphite in it too, is the removable exactly. roof has the roof is, graphite. Exactly, uh, is graphite, the yep. hood is graphite, uh, carbon, um, uh, carbon fiber, mm -hmm. composite. Um, and you're seeing more and more of these lightweight materials and uh, Ford is playing around with a, a type of plastic called polycarbonate to replace glass. Right. And what, what's happening is when they take weight out of the material, you can use a smaller engine um, and still have a very you know quick accelerating car, but with a smaller engine. Mm -hmm. Now you have a smaller engine, which means you need lighter engine mounts. Mm -hmm. And if you have a lighter engine, small, less weight, you can have smaller brakes, a lighter suspension system. And it's kind of this virtuous cycle where you take weight out um, and and then you find new ways to take right. e even more weight out. And years ago, we were on on going the opposite. The automakers were uh, sort of in this horsepower arms race, always making the engines bigger. You need mm -hmm. a bigger engine, bigger engine mounts, bigger brakes, bigger suspension, and cars were getting heavier and heavier. And now we're seeing the uh, the opposite. And there were good examples of it. I mean, the Corvette yeah. was probably the well, best. I think, uh, I think that's one stunning. No, they're called the Stingray. And there is some harking, but I just wish they'd put a center bar on that back window. I, <laughs> I, I still like the split window uh, stingray. I just thought it was stunning. What was your impression, just, Neil? I, it's, I, I'm uh, looking forward to getting a chance to, to drive the car yeah. because, as I said, that was a vehicle where they took a lot of weight out. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, they didn't take, uh, it's only about 99 pounds lighter than the previous model, which is, is good, it's not dramatic, but because they've taken the weight out, the car is very, very quick. It accelerates, yeah. uh, it'll, it'll throw you back into the seats if yeah. you hit the gas. It's interesting that the very high performance and that race is still on for horsepower, um, and so speed, so you're seeing now cars creeping up from, mm -hmm. at one time we were gasping at 400, horsepower now 500, 550, now there's some creeping over 600. So up there, the performance has been extraordinary. Um, and I, you know what, I was quite surprised at was Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, Tesla sort of, from what I gather, chatting to the people that have dropped for right now their super beautiful sports car shape because it just wasn't getting going. And instead they brought in four, uh, really a four-seater actually with a trunk that opens up and becomes a seven-seater. Um, car, so it's electric. Reminds me of the Rumble seat, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's beautifully done. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's, the Model S, the Tesla. Yeah, Model it's S. so um, every inch of it has been used and designed. This thing in electric mode does zero to sixty in four point one yeah, seconds, four point two seconds. Mm -hmm. Now it'll only go thirty miles on on the, on the electric, but then they've got this inverter process that as you slow down, so it's recharging the battery. So very sophisticated oh, wow. stuff going on. And they've, I think it's interesting they've done this quick switch from the two-door supercar to a more everyday, although it's, it's a $50,000 model, $60,000, sure. $70,000. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that still is on my mind is the whole battery thing. And it's not a big deal, but it's always been there. And I heard someone ask one of the, the, the guys at, on the Tesla, what about the batteries? What if they go wrong? And the guy flat out said, I don't know. We don't know yet. Mm -hmm. But for $10,000 more... On, if you tack it onto the price of the Tesla, whichever one you get, you buy yourself essentially a guarantee that we, you know, it'll be replaced. 
but we still haven't figured out what we're going to do with all of these batteries when they start to fail mm -hmm. or their lifetime runs out and so on because they're full of stuff. I mean, there's, they're not full. Of, you know, they've got some nasty stuff in them. Neil Bodet of the Wall Street Journal, what do you think about Damien Farrell's uh, perception on that on batteries? We still have this big problem here in America when you look at uh, electric vehicles, battery, the cost is still prohibitive for some people, even with the rebate type of things that are going on. Are we ever going to get past that point with this, these issues? It's going much slower than, uh, than the proponents uh, of electric cars thought originally a couple of years ago. Um, we may be moving a little bit closer to that. Uh, Nissan uh, has been making their electric car the Leaf in Japan and exporting to the U.S. They just started production in Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, and they cut the price by six thousand dollars. So it was uh, it was about thirty two thousand, and now they br brought it down into the the twenties range for the. It's a four seat vehicle, so it's a, a pretty small car uh, for a car that small. It's still uh, probably ten thousand dollars more than what you could get if you went to a uh, Toyota Corolla or a uh, Toyota Yaris or something smaller than that. But um, we're getting there, so we're making progress. I still think, though, there are other hitches. I mean, the the, the range of the vehicle you can drive it eighty miles. They say you can drive it, you know, hundred now. Well, we'll see what that works out to be in in real life. But if you're only stuck, if you're stuck uh, driving only 80 miles before you need to plug the thing back in, um, that's a really limited car. You can't take it on weekend trips. Mm -hmm. um, your, you know, if your commute is 20 miles and then you want to run some errands, well, you know, you may be cutting it close. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really, um, I like to describe it as it's like a uh, an electric can opener. <laughs> I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it does one job really, really well. But it's not a, a, a be-all and end-all in your kitchen mm -hmm. that's going to do everything for you. And that's what Americans use cars for now is, is you know, mm -hmm. you'll have somebody with a, um, you know, an SUV where they throw the kids in or they throw, you know, gear in for work and they use it for camping, they use it for running errands, they're right. dropping the kids off. And so our cars are uh, uh, everything to us and, and not really, um, you know, one... Um, one job tool. Is there a predominant color this year in automobiles or not necessarily? Is there anything that really stands out design-wise that this is the it year for? You know what, I, you know what I, I, I noticed is I sort of felt there was uh, a lot of dark like charcoal gray right, at the deep, show. That deep red that Ford has, deep sort of Tuscan red as well. That I yeah. think is quite elegant. Yeah, oh, I saw yeah. one that, as opposed to the shiny kind of cars you see, it was more of a matte, matte finish. finish. Yeah, yes, that's, uh, that's a, a special finish you you can order. Uh, it's not cheap, um, but uh, but it is popular. I mean, people do like it. It, it took me a while to really, because at first I thought that looked like an older vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, when your car starts, right, it's got a little more. bit of that hot rod. Uh, yes, yeah. genre yeah. to yeah. it. Um, right. like Audi has yeah. that that flat. Um, color, I, but I, you know, design-wise, I just I thought everything um, was beautiful. I, tail lights are clearly a big yeah. design element these days. Sure. You picked up on that too. And I think they've gone just a little bit overboard. In my suddenly, this tail light has much? become this very sculptural thing. Yes. And I, I think Ford started, and I and I like the way Ford handled it, the way it wraps around into sort of that point mm -hmm. down the side of the car. Now they. Some of the other manufacturers are doing the same thing, but now they're getting sort of bulbous mm -hmm. and bulgy, and they mm -hmm. stick out from the car. Um, but it's not a big deal. But I saw beautiful design um, everywhere that I looked, except now, for I was say, our not, camel. Not everywhere. Now we've come to the Camel Award on <laughs> Damien on Design on 1290 WLBY. We're going to have each uh, Damien and Neil give their picks for the Camel Award. And why the name Camel again? Because it's designed by a committee, you know. <laughs> I mean... You know, how many humps could you put across this thing? <laughs> you know, could we get six legs on it? No, let's do four and let's make two of them move in the same direction at the same time as Too opposed to alternatively. To <laughs> you know, and uh, let's do something that can walk across the deserts. You know, really? <laughs> and your Camel Award goes to, Damien? Oh, it's the same as last year. Nissan, get with it, man. Get that. <laughs> What, what's its official name? The, the juke. juke. The you know, you can switch the letters and you can come up with puke, you can come up with a joke, you can... <laughs> oh, guys, please, you know, this thing that... 
was obviously given out on Monday morning to all the intern designers, big block of clay there, and I think the order was, whatever you scrape off, you got to put back on somehow. <laughs> we're, not, we're not wasting any clay, and the end result is this thing that sort of sags in the middle with these froggy eyes up on the hood. It does look like a frog, yeah. Oh, my Lord. And I, I, one got up behind me a few months ago, and I was trying to figure out these, these, uh, this turn signal that was seemed to be floating up in the back of my rear view mirror, you know, and it was, you know, four feet off the ground. And then I realized, oh my God, it's one of my pukes um, <laughs> behind me. And, and, and we, I've got a relative in South Africa and she's just going to kill me the next time she sees me because she has one and she got on my case last year about it and she loves it. I'm sure they might be a, you know, a great car to drive and so on. But uh, sorry, your son, you get it again. <laughs> now, Nissan Neil. also gets another one, right? That's a Nissan. That That's you. a Nissan. That's right. a Nissan. There's another one. Uh, the uh, Nissan Rogue is Rogue. not, one, not oh. one of my favorite looking uh, uh, cars, not one of my favorite d designs. I, I agree. I, I don't understand the Juke and how that it was ever approved. Um, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, the, the, the new Leaf uh, has yes. some odd looking headlights. Yes. Um, but there wasn't, uh, other than that, um, I, I think the industry is doing okay on design. Oh, I, I, I agree. I think the, the, the Leaf tamed down its front end from mm -hmm. the, the Duke um, a lot, and it's got one face instead of three, yeah. but it still has the froggy eyes on top, which, are, you know, as we said last year, very handy if you're driving and, in, you know, you're going out to dinner on a night when the roads are all flooded three foot deep. <laughs> you can get around and people can see you coming um, and what direction you intend to turn. All right, this show is uh, supposed to set the tone for the year, for 2013, North American International Auto Show. What kind of year are we going to have, Neil? Um, I was just talking about that this morning with somebody from one of the large uh, dealer chains, and they're very optimistic. Um, we sold uh, just shy of 15 million cars in 2012, and they think we're over going to go over 15 and maybe hit 15.5. And uh, this path that we're on of steady um, uh, growth, not huge jumps in, in sales, but uh, 8, 9, 10 percent. Uh, that's very healthy for the industry because they, 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 they keep all of their plants running. Um, they can add ad additional plant capacity and be sure that it, if they're going to use it. They don't have to add lots and then find out that they've got a new plant that's only operating at half capacity, which will, will cause them to lose money on that plant. So it's a very healthy uh, point for the industry, and we should see an, another good year. A lot of cars on the road are still very old. The average age is still um, 9, 10 years old, so people need to replace it. Even though the economy is not really firing on all cylinders, there's still uh, strong demand for cars. So um, it should be another good year. And design-wise, good year to buy, according Absolutely. to Absolutely. I think Damien? the greatest range of most exciting designs and options, if you're out there, you can really find the design to suit your taste and, you know, the car that you want to wear. Uh, best year I've seen yet, design-wise. All right. And if you like froggy eyes, I guess... You can, you can get yourself a pair of froggy eyes, you know. You know, maybe they make glasses for that thing, too, so you can, you know, not get blinded or the car, you know. Well, sunglasses for the juke. I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> that a car that looks like that um, kind of rankles you guys, because America's been in love with the VW Bug for years, and that's kind of similar, right? No, that it has just, a cute quality. It's a oh, cute, I agree. Cuteness, I guess. It's, okay. it's, got a, it's right. a car where you could take one line and draw its profile. And As that opposed to, to good design. stuffing all these different things yeah, in the other yeah, yeah, Okay, all yeah. right, I see the difference. I have to say, in the, in the new Beetle, uh, they have tried to give it a faster look. So the roof line ah, is a little yes. bit lower. And the slope of the, the back end is, uh, it doesn't, doesn't curve down uh, quite as steeply. It's, it's more of a gentle, which give, uh, gentle decline, and that gives it a faster profile. And it, it, I like the way the car looks. I do too. Uh, the old one uh, appealed strongly to women. The new one with the faster look is supposed to bring in some men, uh, male buyers. All right. And you can read all about it in the Wall Street Journal, Detroit Bureau Chief, Neil Baudet, and our Damien on Design, Damien Farrell, with Damien Farrell Design Group at DFD. Online.com. DFDGonline.com. And for more information about the North American International Auto Show going on now, you can go to NAIS.com. Thank you, gentlemen. Great talking about. Neil, thanks for coming again. Awesome. It's great. It's always a blast. We will always have a love affair with cars. <laughs> You're listening to Ann Arbor's Talk Station, 1290 WLBY.